Hello and welcome to today's live baking session with All Things Fab. Come along, let's make some cranberry scones. Hello and welcome to today's live baking session. Today I'm going to be making some cranberry scones. So over here I've got 450 grams of self-raising flour. I've got 120 grams of unsalted butter. This is 100 grams of granulated sugar. Over here I've got 200 ml of milk. And I will be adding a little pinch of salt, a bit of vanilla. This is a little bit of lemon juice, about one and a half tablespoons. And the almighty cranberry. These are dry cranberries, so it's going to be very lovely. Um, also, I'll be needing a cutter. You can either use the zigzaggy shape size or the plain size. We'll use both just to show you the alternate. And I've also preheated my oven to 200 degrees and I've also pre-lined my baking tray. So, let's get started. I'll throw in my flour straight in. Into that I'll add the sugar. I'll add a little pinch of salt. That's just enough. And this is my butter. I'll throw that straight in. I've already made them into little cubes and the reason for that is it's easier to just crumble them together. So I'm going to begin to crumble all of these together. Just using your thumb to squeeze as you go. It's a very, very simple method. By all means, if you've got a food processor that does the crumbling for you, you could of course use that. Otherwise, if you haven't got the food processor that does the crumbling for you, it's so easy peasy to just mash and crumble your butter and flour together just like this. Ideally, this should take about two to three minutes to do. So that way you know it's, it's easy. It's not hard at all. So I'll keep going until I am absolutely satisfied that my butter and flour are mixed together. The other time someone asked in the comment section, um, they did say, what if they don't have a self-raising flour? That's a very good question. So wherever you are, if you do not have a self-raising flour, it's simply a combination of plain flour and some baking powder. So if you don't have a self-raising flour, just use your plain flour and add one teaspoon or so of baking powder to the flour. And that simply, that just simply makes a self-raising flour. And that's it, really, and we're done with this. So that to me, if you can see closer, that's a very lovely crumbly texture. It's a mixture of flour, butter, sugar, and a pinch of salt. Perfect. So I'll make a little hole in the middle because I'm going to be adding my wet ingredient into this mixture. This is my milk and that's 200 milliliters. To that, I'm going to add some vanilla. If 
sign you're not going like in the front there. And like I said earlier, that is lemon juice in there. I'll mix this all together. And I'll simply throw this straight into the dry ingredients. And I'll gently begin to fold the dry ingredients into the noodle. What we're going to have is a very wet and sticky texture. And it's still very nice and crumbly, which is just perfectly what I need. So, before I use my hands, I'm going to now throw in the cranberries. And I'll mix them all together. I'll take this away and begin to use my hands to bring them together. Just like that. It's definitely a messy job. But it's very worth it in the end. Bring them together. Like I said earlier, it's going to be nice, crumbly, and very sticky. You see that? It's lovely. Just keep mixing it together until you have a little, a nice little ball. It should be able to nicely stick together and you're gonna need a rolling pin just a gentle rolling not a very tough one so once that's ready we'll take this off just give a quick clean to my surface and I'll throw this straight down onto the board. So I'm going to now use my hands to start bringing this together. Push down, roll, push down, roll, push down, roll. So just continue in that rhythm. Push down, roll, so it brings everything in perspective. It's probably a good idea to flower your base just a little bit. And perhaps a bit on the top, just a bit, don't need too much. So continue, push down, roll, push down, roll. That way it forms, brings everything together. Because you don't want to over mix it. You want it to be nice and crumbly. Push down, roll. Push down, roll. I'm actually satisfied with that. Just use my rolling pin, just powder it gently, and just glide along. It's very gently. We don't need to over roll this because we need it to have a very good height. sure it maintains that height. That's 
Perfect. So, I like a thing like this. What it does is, you're going to use the cutter, but you need to dip it in flour. That way, there's no sticky, and it makes a very good transition. So, we're going to do that. We give a very quick wipe around the edges, just so we can bring in our baking tray right here. So again, I'm going to dip, 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 and cut straight down. That's it. Put that straight into the tray. Dip, cut, push it down all the way. There you go. Straight in. Dip it again. Push it down and bring it right out straight into the tray. Cut somewhere in the middle. Push it down. Straight into the tray. This is going to be a very lovely, crumbly scones. Very lovely. You can see that height, that level, that's just perfect for what you need. And I think they should make one more. That's it. It's no wastage at all. So I'll bring this all together again and we'll continue pushing down, spinning it around, pushing down, spinning it around, push down, spin around. You can turn around the other side and just do the same. What the push down does is it brings the crumbs all together and stops it from cracking too much. So if you push it down, it helps to stick them all together. I'll put a little bit of flour on the surface. And a bit on the top. I think that's just about enough. We'll dip, push it down, cut, dip, dip, and cut. That's it. So now that we're done with this, I'm going to do a quick egg wash. this together that looks all right and we'll just simply brush a little bit on top that's on the top that should do so that's a combination of egg, milk, brush it on the top. And if you remember earlier, I said I've already preheated my oven to 200 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to throw this in for 15 to 17 minutes. So when it's about 15 minutes, I'll check to see if, it, if that's fine. Sometimes, depending on the temperature, 15 minutes would do. 
otherwise I'll leave it for another two extra minutes. So about 15 to 17 minutes and we should be having tea. That's it, all done and dusted. So I'm going to bake this now in my preheated oven for 15 to 17 minutes. So it's been 17 minutes exactly and our scones are perfectly ready for tea. It's been baking at 200 degrees so I'll just put it on the cooling rack that says it's ready. So we're going to make some tea and easily have some very lovely tea time. Okay, so we're ready to have tea. Traditionally in England, we use clotted cream and some jam. So that's what I'm going to do. You just take one, cut it in the middle. It opens and it's perfect. I'll add some jam to one side. Just like that, roughly on the top. And I'll add clotted cream, which is my absolute favorite, to the other side. Just like that. As you can see, it's nice and crumbly, which means those cones are just right. So once you put the clotted cream on, tea is absolutely ready. Put them together, and that's your perfect scone for tea. Absolutely amazing. So we're going to start our tea time. I'll just move this slightly to the corner. And we're going to have tea. Simple English breakfast tea. A little drop of milk. And enjoy your lovely scones. So thank you so much for spending time with me and for baking along with me today. I hope you can try out this recipe and let me know in the comment section how you liked it. Remember to press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.